Hello and welcome to Standing By, the show where we talk with the hardworking understudies, standbys, and swings, helping keep Broadway's curtains up every night. I'm your host, Kasky Hunsader. We're here at Bartini Altar Lounge in the heart of the Broadway district in New York City. And we are doing a very special edition of our show today. This is our On the Road edition. My guests today are Mary Lee Storino and Lauren Cadel. Um, these ladies, full disclosure, I've actually toured with. So we're doing a, a, a touring company version of the show. Uh, we did Chorus Line together, Mary Lee and I. And Lauren and I have done the Wizard of Oz national tour. Lauren has also toured nationally with the producers as well as Young Frankenstein. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hey, glad to be here. Um, let's start with you, uh, Mary Lee. Talk about your background a little bit. Where are you from and where you went to school? Sure. I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ooh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, love it. And uh, yeah, both my parents are in theater. My mom's a costume designer. My dad's a director choreographer. So I didn't play Little League. I didn't do soccer. I didn't do any of that. I took ballet and piano and dance and you know, pretty much just fell in love with it since I can remember and always wanted to live in New York. So went to college, got my BFA. Where'd you go here. to school? Viterbo University in La Crosse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my first job here was actually doing a Christmas Carol at McCarter Theater. So I got my EMC card there. Um, and then for a tour, I just went to the open call like everybody else and just kept on, you know, making it through until final callbacks and then got the call a few days later. So like the textbook old-fashioned way. <laughs> and you did six months on the road when this mm -hmm. was the revival, uh, the national tour of the revival production of A Chorus Line, mm -hmm. and you were in the ensemble mm -hmm. as well as covering the principal. So you were one of the cut dancers. Yeah, cut dancer in the beginning, and then I understudied um, Deanna Morales, B.B. Benzenheimer, and Connie Wong. But I did Connie McKenzie. Of course, obviously. because you're not Asian. Because <laughs> I'm not Asian. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, from Wichita, Kansas. I grew up singing and dancing as well. My family is not particularly in the arts, but they are artistic, fun-loving people and characters themselves. Um, I, my mom gave me the option. She said, you, can, you have to do piano, but you know you can pick up a few other things you want to do. And I was like, I want to do ballet and be a brownie. So <laughs> dropped out of brownies, of course. And But the ballet stuck, and so I did ballet and tap and jazz all growing up. And um, I kind of knew I probably wasn't going to be a ballerina, which was okay with me. I wanted to have a little more fun <laughs> in life. So uh, theater was a little bit more where my heart was at. And um, decided to pack up and move out to California to go to the University of California, Irvine, where I was a double major in dance and drama. And you had auditioned right at the end of school. You auditioned for the National Tour of the Producers. Yeah, Tell us actually, about that. Um, our school had a program, it's called the New York Satellite Program. They took 25 to 30 um, uh, undergrads into the city for four weeks, and we stayed actually at 46th between 10th and 11th, which is just down the street. Wow. And um, we basically slept four to a studio bedroom, and we took classes all day, and then got to see Broadway shows at night. And we were, um, we had to do three auditions while we were there. And so one of the auditions that um, that I took up, that I did was the producers. And Rachel Hoffman was casting with Dave Clemens at that time, and she had done a mock audition with our class um, for school. And so she was like, anybody who's tall, make sure you come to the producers. And so I went to the call. It was actually my junior year, so I left after my junior year. So I have one class to finish my college degree. <laughs> I know, I gotta go back. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's kind of how I got my start. And. Luckily, they uh, they were nice enough to allow me to be the swing and dance captain of the show. Uh, so, and you've uh, been on the road, Lauren. This is now you've done three national tours, yes. and you've swung on all three of them. So that's yeah. kind of a specialty that's, of yours. Uh, I love it, you know. And one of the women that taught um, a class on the satellite program, Jenny Foot, who's been a swing on Broadway. I know she was a swing on Dirty Rotten Scoundrels at the time. She kind of explained what it was, and right then I was like. That's what I want to do. I don't like. I could care less about doing something the same every night. I that really, for whatever, tickled my fancy, and I was when, when I actually got the chance to do it. I fell in love with it over and over again. I did two years of the producer, swinging both years, and then was involved with Oz, only touring for two, but swinging both, and swung on Young Frankenstein. So I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love swinging. Uh, what the challenges, like what the excitement is about covering multiple roles. You know, versus just playing one character the entire time. Yeah, I, I mean, it definitely, and she hit on it on the nose. You know, you can never just get used to one thing. You always have to be on your toes. You know, thinking like you never even know what's going to happen. Like, 
you know, and sometimes in the middle of a show, something happens and then it's, you're on and it's just that exhilarating, exciting feeling, you know, of like, ooh, it's just like something, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it's just really, really, it just makes you feel alive. <laughs> what is it? for you specifically that that keeps drawing you to that um, type of a position yeah i like the mental challenge that it uh, stimulates the ability to know where everyone's at on stage and where you fit in and when you don't know how to problem solve in the moment um you know there are certain times where everyone's in a line and they're all in the same costume they all look the same you know and, and especially like granny tap mm. and producers <laughs> at some point you all get in a row and you know there were times where I didn't know exactly where I was supposed to be in line, but it's the ability to hold back mm -hmm. until the last second and figure out, oh, there's the hole I need to go into, and not freaking out and staying calm. And I think it takes a special mind to do both roles. It takes a really special, calm, you know, big picture person to be a swing, and it takes a really meticulous, amazing person to do a role over and over as well. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's just what you prefer and what you like. Some people really like that ability to know exactly what they're doing every night. That's not the case with me. I like to be thrown into crazy situations and problem solve, and to me that's exciting and fun, whereas for someone else, that would not be fun at all. Some people are meant to be a star, and some people are great chorus people. You have mm -hmm. to have chorus people, and they are the backbone of a show. They are the large voices of a show. Let's talk about the shows that you guys have done. So, uh, Mary Lee, A Chorus Line, this is a show that has an iconic show. It's Absolutely. one of one of the longest. Uh, mm -hmm. It broke records at the time as the longest running Broadway show. Yeah. The production that you did was choreographed by Bayork Lee, yeah. who is the original Connie in the Broadway production, who has been putting it up all over the all world, over the sent, world. ever since. Mm -hmm. What was it like stepping into such an iconic show? Magical, just a dream come true. You know, when you're going through the the final callbacks and you're like. You know, and it's for a chorus line. Like, of course you're gonna walk home singing, God, I hope I get it. You know, it's just like it writes itself. And I still, you know, get chills, like thinking about the experience that, you know, she brought with us. And she really just, you know, what a gift to get the essential, you know, message and, and feeling of a show from somebody who lived it. And especially a chorus line was so conceptual. You know, like it was just a bunch of people sitting around and talking. And not, not only was she, an original cast member, yeah. but she was part of the process of the that whole, created the show. Mm -hmm. The role of Connie is based is on a lot of her, her life. life. Yeah, and and I understudied, you know, Connie, and it wasn't as much pressure because it was a completely different character. Um, but you know, you're still in front of Bayork Lee singing her song, and it's just, uh, yeah, that was a really nerve-wracking day. But she's wonderful, wonderful. So you know, she really made it just very special. Well, how do you feel, you know, in terms of carrying the torch and, and bringing that to, to, to people all across the country? Yeah, I mean, it is so iconic and it is such a specific show that, um, you know, we didn't have a ton of artistic license, truthfully, you know, like in rehearsal, Bayark was like, you have to say it this way, you have to do this motion with this word because that's what people want to see and that's what they're going to expect to see. You're, you know, they're coming to see the original choreography of a chorus line. And Lauren, um, as far as iconic shows, uh, the tours that you've done haven't been historically running as long as, say, a chorus line, but the producers was such a huge hit when it went out there. So uh, it was one of those shows that when it came to a city, people knew what they were getting. You know, they were, they've heard about it. It had such hype. It ran for a very long time on Broadway. Um, you know, what, what was it like being a part of that, of a show that it was a phenomenon, especially recently after it had become such a phenomenon? Yeah, uh, well, and truth be told, when I first went in for the audition, I had never seen the show, I had never seen the movie, I had no idea what I was walking into. I was, like, on the way to the call, the callback, actually, I was asking my friend, can you just kind of give me a rundown of the show? <laughs> like, I have no idea what the show is. And I got the show, and I still hadn't seen it, still hadn't, like, really done my research. Bad actor. And, um... And right before I went on the road, I was like, well, I should definitely go see it on Broadway before it closes, you know. And Susan Stroman is a genius in her own right. So to be able to be part of that legacy and part of that family, and it really truly is a family, um, I did learn from her West End folks, Lee, Lee Constantine and Nigel West, who were her associates out there and her dance captain out there. And they, you know, she has a way with who she casts and who she hires to work with her, and they're all really important in making sure that the experience is positive and nurturing and you know something that you were saying that you know course line you were stuck to doing these very specific mm -hmm. things while yes there was a really specific mold that producers was a part of 
you felt like you were allowed to be really creative in that process into fitting into that mold, which was really fun, and I'd never really experienced that. As a performer, I'd really felt like I'd always been told exactly what to do, and it was kind of the first time where I felt artistic license um, to be able to develop my own personal characters, you know, although I was watching the others and somewhat emulating them, but also being able to bring a bit of myself to it as well, which was super fun. And then to follow up that show, the next, the next show you worked on, which theatrically isn't as much of a, a cornerstone of the mm -hmm. you know, pop culture, but Wizard of Oz as a movie and the, and the production um, that we worked on was essentially the, the movie version. Mm -hmm. um, again, is such a, a hallmark. People, that's, you know, it's celebrating, I believe it's 80th anniversary coming up now uh, as a movie. So what was it like going into another show that had such an iconic Yeah, well, presence? and it's, it, it's strange because being from Kansas, it is actually really part of my legacy. I, you know, at the airport in Kansas, it is all Wizard of Oz everything. So I definitely grew up inundated by it a little bit and didn't realize how much it was a part of the rest of America until I moved out of Kansas and became part of these other communities and was like, oh, it's like that iconic. And just growing up, I didn't know any better um, because it was so much about Kansas. And then just seeing it being brought to every city and you know, in the show we had 12 local kids and to see what kind of huge stars these characters were to these children and to their families and how much people really just fell in love with the movie was is was really cool. And again, it was the same British team that I'd worked on producers with, Lee Constantine and Nigel West, and I thought they did a wonderful job of having that kind of British humor with it, but at the same time staying really, really, really true to what I think people know from the film. And I think, again, without that, you're, you're expected to deliver mm -hmm. a certain amount of Judy Garland or a certain amount of, you know, those iconic peoples, uh, people of the film. And I think we did a good job of interpreting it in a modern but classic way. We're going to take a quick break. Stick around. We'll be back with more Standing By with Mary Lee and Lauren. Want to meet more Broadway stars? Check out previous episodes, including Annie, Cinderella, and the Phantom of the Opera at StandingByTV.com. Welcome back to Standing By. I'm your host, Kaski Hunsader, and today we have a special On the Road edition. I'm talking with Mary Lee Storino from the National Tour of A Chorus Line and Lauren Cadle from the National Tour of Young Frankenstein. Uh, let's talk about some of the kind of the technical challenges of performing in a, in a swing capacity. Um, Mary Lee, as, as somebody in Chorus Line, now, uh, what's unique about that and maybe different from some of the shows that you've done, Lauren, is where, you know, there's every ensemble track is a very different character and kind of has their own path. In a chorus line, for a majority of the show, everybody is doing the same thing, but in one in a different space. A little different order, a so little different rhythm. How, does, how, is that, how is that challenging to, be, to have something where every track is so similar in many ways, but yet has those differences? How do you keep that organized? Well, in, in a chorus line specifically, you know, you have your track sheet with all the numbers. So the stage, you know, has zero front and center, and that's where BB stood. So she was my favorite track, because I'm like, BB, zero, got it. And um, then you have, you know, one through you know, eight or whatever, sometimes nine, sometimes ten, depending on what stage there was, and then on the other side. And so, you know, you have your number of stage right and stage left, you have the seams, you have the down seam, the mid seam, the back seam, the line, you know, the line. Um, lots of just traffic patterns. That was the worst part. No. And go, I did not go into Tech Week knowing all my tracks. Like, mm -hmm. no way. There was no way. Um, and then... Well, I was going to segue into that. Segue into that <laughs> okay. Is I know that you um, you had in tech due to an injury of of, of, the, of an actress actually had to take over the role of BB mm -hmm. for a period of several weeks. Yeah, uh, you know it was funny because in rehearsal, um, Deanna, the actress, um, the playing her had like some injury stuff, so I was doing that a lot in rehearsal. And then Connie, I was really focused on because. I'm the, I was her only cover. I was the only person short enough to believably sing four foot ten. The one and only time my height has worked in my favor, <laughs> by the way. Still waiting for the next time. Um, but yeah, so I was really focused on those two. And BB, I was like, ah, she's always on zero. I'll get BB. You know, she's gonna whatever. Terrible. Because then Tech Week comes, you're BB. It was really cool because my dad and my aunt, my uncle, and like a lot, I have a lot of family on the West Coast. They all got to see me do, you know, a role. Which was so, so, I'm so thankful for that. I felt really fortunate. It's just stage time in general as a swing. You know, the more you're on stage, the more the next time you go back, it's like, I got this. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and technically, what is your method for kind of preparing taking notes? Do you color code? Do you use um, diagrams? Yeah, I love diagrams. I'm very visual. I love diagrams. Like the, the tracking sheet that we got, Bioric has perfected like over the last 10 years. Like it really is perfect. Like there's blanks and there's pictures and you just put, you know, it's like I give my dance bag to and then there's a blank. I put these people's dance bags on, blank, blank, blank. <laughs> so it's just like, you just really, it was just like kind of going back to like elementary school, fill in the blank, and then just memorize that. Well, I applaud you because the majority of shows I've done, I've had like six dancer girls and then three character women. So in my mind, those are like four different tracks. Mm -hmm. There's three separates and then one kind of all-encompassing all dancers. And yes, they do different things, but Overall, they're kind of similar. Um, but uh, my method is just to learn everything first. Don't try and compartmentalize into mm -hmm. the track itself. It's just to be a sponge and soak up every piece of information you can. Even if it's guy stuff, you never know when you have to go out for a boy or <laughs> split track things. Um, so just learn the information first. Then once I feel comfortable, I'll start putting it into tracks and following one person a day during rehearsal or really focusing on them and watch them during the show and watch all their exits and turns. Um, and I make my own cheat sheets as well. I, I basically do, do act one on one side of a page and act two, and then I put them in like a little laminating sheet, and that's what I carry around. And I worry about however many numbers it'll take to get to my next break to worry about the next set of numbers. So I, I try not to over stimulate myself by saying, okay, here's the whole show. I would run through it all before the show with my sheet, and then just trust that I knew what I was doing, and Get, only do chunks at a time. Then I didn't get overwhelmed. I didn't feel like, well, but I don't know where I'm at in bouts. I'm not there yet. I'm at the opening. Calm down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Every time I would do something, I would also be watching their counterpart or someone else on stage. Like, I would be in my character, but also when I had a little bit of downtime, I would kind of just peek around. The more you're on stage with the other people, mm -hmm. the more you kind of see what the relativity to other people are. And that was really helpful. Again, just the stage time in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you're doing that track, you can kind of see where people are at. So that was really helpful to me. Now, since this is our special on the road edition, um, I definitely want to talk about the challenges of being on the road. It is very different than being in a sit-down production, especially on Broadway or, or anywhere where you're in the same place. So uh, let's talk about that. Obviously, um, you know, Lauren, you've done multiple tours, so you clearly enjoy being on the road. Uh, how was the experience for you with it being your first tour? Um, I mean, it was hard. For me specifically, because I had like, I mean, I'm married now, but I was engaged at the time. So, you know, being away from your significant other was the worst part. I mean, the bus every morning, we had bus call at 6 a.m. multiple, multiple times. Um, so that's rough, you know, doing a chorus line, sitting on a bus, trying to sleep on a seat like this for nine hours and then getting off and trying to dance. You know, that was probably the most challenging thing I could imagine. If and they expect you to, you know, keep a dancer body and stay really thin and then you pull off the highway and your choices for lunch are Wendy's or Taco Bell. <laughs> so, you know, eating healthy on the road is really hard too, but doable. And then about three weeks in we found out that we could drink on the bus and that was a game changer. It's always a game changer when you realize you can <laughs> we drink. We had no idea. We're like, wait, we can drink on the bus? <laughs> Fantastic. Because it was like sometimes we'd have a 10 hour bus ride with no show. So it was like, Oh, 3.30, yep, all right, who's got the margaritas? <laughs> well, and I had a different experience because my first two years I was on the cast bus. And for Wizard of Oz, because I worked with the kids in the afternoon, I actually traveled overnight on the crew bus. The crew bus. And then I was reverted back to the cast bus on Young Frank. So I've had, you know, varying bus situations. Um, I can say the crew bus is my jam. And uh, it's, it's way easier because you have your own space, you have your bunk, and it's a little bit more private. There's a little kitchenette and that kind of stuff. Although the, you know, the crew works long, 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 long hours, mm -hmm. and they are the hardest working people in show business. So props to crew. Um, and, but you know, being on the cast bus, I personally, if my bed shook and like whirred a little bit, I would actually be okay with that because I probably sleep better on a bus from traveling so much. <laughs> I kind of sleep better on a bus than in my own bed, which is kind of <laughs> sad to say. And I was always a good sleeper in the car since I was little, so maybe I was just born to tour. Um, but yes, <laughs> and, to again, the same challenges, absolutely. Getting off the bus, those kinds of things made it challenging. And definitely, depending on the cast, I've been with you know, several different casts now. And the people do make, you know, make the situation what it is. And sometimes it's, you're, a, you're a family, and you have 
squabbles like any other siblings and you have to learn to deal with a lot of different personalities on the road. It's incredible to kind of see what your country is about and to see the different places. I mean, I didn't see much while we were driving because I was asleep most of the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, <laughs> you know, when you got to get off and interact with the locals that were working your show and for me getting to interact with the children and their families and you got to kind of see the spread of the nation and to be able to, I don't know, recognize each place and each venture, you know, each city as this own little world. And it was really cool to be able to interact with the people. Um, Talk about, I guess, what it's like not only swinging, but swinging in a situation where every, every stage is different every night. Yeah. Um, well, luckily for me, my show's never the same because I'm a swing. So that, to me, is not as difficult as I think the main cast or the cast that uh, performed every night, I think they had to almost be swings in their own right of their own track because they were constantly, you know, we'd have company meeting before and let them know what the changes or alters were to the show. And if they were really drastic, there were times that it was just like, oh my goodness. And I would, as dance captain, I would always post them on the call board as reference points and in the dressing room. So as they're running out, just like I'm checking my notes, I would give them the ability to check the notes to just say, okay, in this scene, I don't have this element, or you know, I'm swapping with this person because five other people are out, or whatever it may be, you know, because sometimes it wasn't just the physical challenges, it was the fact that everybody on your bus had food poisoning or were mm -hmm. sick with the plague or whatever it was. You know, so sometimes it was difficult because there were multiple people out and I was being four different people and the mayor of Munchkinland. You know, it was just like insane. Do yeah. you, uh, Mary Lee, do you have a favorite city from your tour that you can think of? Yeah. Um, oh, we loved Riverside, California. We were like living there. It was so cute. One of the best audiences we've ever had. It was my last show as BB, like officially, you know, so it was just like, that was really special. Um, beautiful weather. We just had a great time there. And then, um, Pretty nice down in Key West too. I must say. Key West was awesome. <laughs> and we, we were there for like 15 hours, yep. but it was awesome. Really fun, you know. Yeah, we liked going to the warm. Like the last two weeks we were in Florida was just like amazing. Lauren, how about you? Do you have a favorite city or a mm. couple of favorite cities? Well, I love Anchorage, Alaska, and I was um, lucky enough to get to go there twice. I got to go once kind of in the winter season and once in the summer season. So it was kind of neat to get to see the difference and go whale watching and just get to do really different things than what you can do in like the continent US. Well, that's all the time we have today. I'd like to thank my guests, Mary Lee Storino uh, from the National Tour of A Chorus Line and Lauren Cadel from the National Tours of Young Frankenstein, Wizard of Oz, the producers et al. <laughs> um, to learn more about our show and to check out information about our guests, as well as watch other episodes, check out standingbytv.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time. Thanks.